I don't believe in throwing mud at competition. I never have. I believe that the more mud you throw, the more ground you lose. Welcome to the latest episode of Over a Pint. This is a special episode for me as I'm back in my old brokerage. This actually might have been my old office. I think before you guys turn this into a boardroom, this might have been... I think it was. Yeah, I think my desk was right here. You had another one here. That's right. For a bit. So yeah, we're actually, I just realized that. <laughs> we're in my old office <laughs> filming. And this week we have my old broker of record, Barb Brindle. So why don't you introduce yourself for those who don't know you. Hi, I'm Barbara Brindle and I'm the broker of record here at Remax Hallmark York Group in Aurora. I'm also the Vice President of Training and Development for Remax Hallmark Group, group of Companies. And this week we're not drinking alcohol because <laughs> it's early and I'm trying to lose weight. So we're going with the classy water move. So cheers. cheers. Thanks for coming on the show. Thank you. So how long have you actually been in the industry? Oh, I started working in real estate in 1987. So you're born. <laughs> <laughs> That's that one. That makes me feel so much better. <laughs> it's a good year. <laughs> uh, yeah, 1987. Uh, I worked at NRS on the yeah. Lakeshore in Mississauga as a part-time secretary. How long did you do that? Uh, well, I moved. I moved from part-time to full-time, and I switched from that company to Remax yeah. and worked for Remax on Robert Speck Parkway in Mississauga. Hello, Mississauga. Uh, and I worked there. I moved, I've basically done every job in the real estate yeah. industry. I was, I typed offers all day for one company. I did appointments, I did deal secretary, and I did accounting. And I'll never forget, um, Sylvia Babineau was the broker, love her. She was a wonderful lady. And she came down to the accounting department. I was in the accounting department. I was 18 years old. And she said, you know, you should get your real estate license, Barb. And no one had ever said anything like that to me before. Yeah. And uh, and I signed up part time <laughs> and I did night school to get my yeah. license. And so then did you jump, like drop, stop being a secretary and go straight into sales? Or <clears> did you kind of do both for a bit? No, um, I stayed in admin no. until 1994 because yeah. I moved cities. So Is that I'm, when you went to Barry? That's when I moved to yeah. Barry. So I moved to yeah. Barry and uh, another pivotal moment. You get these pivotal moments in your career. Yeah. And a gentleman who worked for Remax in Barry, I was uh, I had two little kids and um, trying to make ends meet. So I had a part time job. I loved waitressing. I would still do waitressing today. Uh, I just love people and I love food. So I was waitressing uh, at a restaurant in Barry and talked to this Remax agent. And he had said uh, to me, "Oh, you know, you really because I was thinking about getting into sales because I was doing part time admin at one company in Barry and I was doing." waiting on tables, part-time, and I'll never forget it. He said to me, he said, oh, you shouldn't bother selling real estate. <laughs> it's really hard. And something switched in me in that yeah. moment that, saw, that, that I just said to myself, well, I'm going to show you. Yeah. I quit my job that week, and uh, I went to Remax, and I said, I'd like to work here, and they said, you're new. Yeah. We don't hire new. <laughs> I thought, oh. Okay, <laughs> so I went to another company. I started yeah. my career at Royal LePage. Great people, and uh, I sold twenty-five houses in my first year. It's good first year. What Five. was the average price point back then? Oh, one hundred and forty thousand. <laughs> <laughs> A little lower than that. Yeah. So I got Rookie of the Year award. I worked yeah. with some fabulous people, and uh, funny enough, that gentleman in the restaurant that really helped me. I, I thank him today. At the time, I was yeah. angry. <laughs> But today I see him as a gift. Five years later, he came and asked me for a job. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> and is he now at the Remax and Barry that you help run? Uh, I'm not sure, to be honest with you. I haven't followed him. That would be a nice turn. That would be an interesting turn. I haven't yeah. followed him, but it did teach me a very valuable lesson that, you know, some people come into your life as a mentor and they're meant yeah. to help you. And then there's other people that still are equally mentors, but yeah. it's just a different message. And it really taught me that I need to listen to me. Yeah. I need to listen to myself um, because there's lots and lots of messages coming in every day from all kinds of places. And if I listened to other people, I would have never um, gotten into real estate. I would have never had the career that I had. I wouldn't have kids. I wouldn't, you know, there's so many things I wouldn't have done if I would have listened to other people's stories about who I am. 
That's funny. That, I had a similar one to me where I was looking and someone's we were talking about the boss who was worth a lot of money and the guy made a comment about, oh yeah, but you know, that'll never be us. And I was like, mm. I'm early or like mid twenties, like that can still be me. Right. <laughs> and I was like, all right, checked out then. I'm like, now we got to go and start my own stuff. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. It was funny. So, so how, 25 yeah. deals in your first year, how did you do that? Like what was your way to get mm. clients? So I had no training. Mm -hmm. It's funny, you know, cause today I run an office and I hire a lot of new people and, um, I don't know. I, there just wasn't training back in those days. There was nothing. If I wanted anything, I had to drive to Toronto and maybe I could see Brian Buffini or Joe Stump or whoever was in Toronto at that time, but I would have to go from Barrie to, to get there. Um, I, it was trial and error, but what I, what I did do, um, and it was intuitive was I decided I was, I couldn't afford a babysitter and I had two little kids. So I decided the best I could do was be during the day I could go deliver flyers. Yeah. So I decided I would do a newsletter and I asked a couple of my friends in the neighborhood. I said, you know, we get some cheesy stuff from real estate people in our mailbox. What would you like to get in your mailbox from a real estate agent? And I did a little survey and I got some feedback and I developed a newsletter that they would find interesting. So I, I didn't make it about me. I made it about what they were looking for. Mm -hmm. And it went really well. Um, and uh, my four-year-old son and my two-year-old daughter, I would drag them around in a little red wagon and we would deliver flyers every single week. Uh, and it was a sled in the winter time. And I would like to interject that that little four-year-old son is 28 years old today and he sells real estate in Barrie. <laughs> Perfect, I hope for you. <laughs> no, well, well he's, with under the umbrella. he's with Remax Che, yeah. uh, Remax Hallmark Che. So yes, uh, I'm working with my son indirectly. Yeah. And uh, I think that's really cool because uh, I planted the seed with him when he was very young. He used to do lemonade stands when he was little. My daughter and he would do lemonade stands and uh, um, newspaper flyer delivery and all those things, things that I did when I was growing up and here he is selling real estate today. So, that's so how much do you help him in his career right now? He calls me when he has a problem with the deal. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's about it. That's about it. That's yeah, about just it. Just off on his own and doing his thing. Yes. He's <laughs> doing his own thing and, uh, yeah. That's good. He's good resource that. to have though. <laughs> yeah. Like he calls me when he needs me, but yeah. I don't interfere with his business and I'm not, yeah. uh, yeah, I'm not inclined. <laughs> I have enough people that need me yeah. for stuff. So, you know, when he needs me, he gives me a call. But um, he's done some pretty cool deals already. Yeah. I had him sell my house in Barrie when I was selling it. And uh, did a good yeah, job. He did a good job. <laughs> tough <Yeah>. client. <laughs> What's that? Am a I tough a tough cover? client? Oh, probably. <laughs> I'm sure he's We'll do an that. episode with him and get him to interject and say how that went. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I was a really big farmer at the beginning. Yeah. And uh, I picked the neighborhood that I lived in. Yeah. So um, it was a combination of condos, semis, small detached and larger detached. So really the perfect farm area. And I was just really consistent. And when I'm coaching agents today, I talk about how I did it and how I started and, and what I did. Uh, it takes patience, it takes consistency, it takes perseverance, and it takes not being attached to the outcome. If you're attached to every time you do an activity, you should get a result. You will be disappointed on a regular basis. Yeah, I remember those. Right? A lot of door knocking that went nowhere. Right? <laughs> I probably of... told you that when you were here. Yeah. Well, I think all, most of the door knocking I did was before you guys came on. Okay. Because we, you guys, I think you bought us out about a year and a half into my career. Okay. And then, yeah, I had door knocked on thousands of homes and tried cold calling and almost nothing for either of them. <laughs> right. Yeah. So that was, a, that was not for me. Not for you. <laughs> no. But you tried it. Yeah. And, and I think that's important. Um, yeah. I just went to what felt good for me. Yeah. And I think that that's a good place to start is what what do you like doing and I really liked my neighborhood and I liked mm -hmm. interacting with people and I liked walking the neighborhood and I liked providing valuable information to people I really liked that and it worked yeah. and um, within five years I had 80% market share in that neighborhood it's pretty good yeah <laughs> <laughs> how long did you end up selling for selling real estate yeah in my career uh, all the way up until I started with Remax Hallmark in 20 five years I've been with Hallmark for Five years in October, this past yeah. October. So, like, did you, were you always sold? Did you end up creating a team? How did you go about that? Um, right. So, I migrated from Royal LePage to Remax, yeah. um, probably in my third year in real estate. Um, within, 
that year was incredible. I have a favorite story that I like to tell. I don't know if, if I can it. tell it, but so, so it was, I made this move from Royal Page to Remax. I think I was three years in the business and I'll never forget it. They put an ad in the paper because back in those days, that was what you did. Mm -hmm. Congratulations on moving. <laughs> and um, I was in the grocery store and I had three clients come up to me in the grocery store congratulating me on my, on my promotion. <laughs> I just to this day, I can't yeah. believe that. Uh, but it's a good reminder to me that people's perceptions are what they are, whether yeah. or not it's true. I have to remember that people have their own perceptions. Yeah. So, so that was a really good lesson. Um, when I made the move, my business doubled in the first year. Yeah. And I got so busy that um, I had already hired an assistant my second year in the business. And I hired my first buyer agent my third year in the business. Yeah. So basically, once I moved to Remax, I needed a buyer agent. Yeah. And did you keep a team the whole time? <clears throat> up until uh, you stopped? No, I had a team ooh, probably until 2011. Yeah. 2011. And then in 2011, um, what, what happens, and, and it's different for everyone, um, I had three buyer agents and I had one full time, one part time admin. Mm -hmm. And things were going gangbusters, but what was happening? to me was that I was becoming farther and farther away from doing what I love doing, which yeah. is working with people. And I was becoming more and more, uh, like I felt like a fire department, um, you know, putting out fires, dealing with, you know, problems. And um, it, I ju it just lost something for me. And, and I missed the day to day working with the clients. Yeah. Um, so I started scaling back on the team and, uh, my very good friend Sue McIntyre, who was with me for 13 years, no. uh, love her to pieces. Hi, Sue. Uh, she works for Remax Che, Hallmark Che. So we're working together again now too, which is amazing. Um, but we had a phenomenal working relationship together, and it just sort of got to the point where I just decided I wanted to be on my own again, no. and uh, and just have an, an assistant and just be on my own, um, just to simplify things. Yeah. I think I think I think I just went through, you know the whole process of it and it just wasn't for me. Now, there's lots of people that rock doing teams. Um, yeah, I wasn't gonna be one of those people. Yeah. And how did that like transition from going from that to getting into management and stopping selling altogether? So, and maybe this is where that piece is slightly different for me is, is the whole, from 1998, I started working for Aria teaching the phase courses yeah. and I loved it. And believe me, if you work for Aria, you don't do it for the money. <laughs> <laughs> they don't pay well. Um, but I loved teaching. Yeah. And from there, I ended up doing the RICO Legal Update and mm -hmm. then the National Association of Realtors. Uh, I taught designation courses for them. And I was doing more and more and more training, which having a team was really helpful because I was away a lot. But I loved the training. And... Um, I realized that I love the training more than I love selling real estate probably in the five years leading up to making the shift and um, I actually went back to school and got my paralegal license somewhere in there too <laughs> because I was interested in the law um, and when I saw a Facebook ad come up with Remax Hallmark, who I'd done a lot of training for back in the 90s and early 2000s, and I'd been down to Toronto teaching for Hallmark yeah. a whole bunch of times, and I saw Deborah post an ad on looking for a manager. Yeah. And I jokingly sent her a, a, a message back on Facebook saying, oh, is it in Barry?" as a joke? Yeah. Yeah. And she said, well, no, but are you interested? <laughs> and, you know, I got quiet and I thought yeah. about it and I thought, well, yeah, if it's with you guys, I'm interested. Because yeah. I, lo like, I loved the culture and I loved mm -hmm. I loved the company um, and I had no idea what I was in for but I went down to Toronto and I met with her and uh, they told me that they had purchased this office and that they were you know looking for somebody to run it and it was close enough to Barry for me that I really had to think about it um, not very long <laughs> not very long um, because being here and doing this role actually taps into the things that I loved about teaching um, so the things that I loved about teaching realtors is helping people grow their business. It just felt to me so much bigger than what I was able to accomplish 
on my own or even as a small team. Um, I just felt that this would be a larger opportunity for me to contribute to the industry. Yeah. So I had already decided while I was in the room being interviewed that I, I wanted to take the job, but I said, let me think about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got a little bit of love there. <laughs> And on the way back, I remember just making a phone call to a couple of people and I said, you know, I'm changing careers. Yeah. Like I already knew. Yeah. And so. feel it's been a good change? Been a great change. Yeah. Doesn't come without growing pains, <clears throat> but gives me great stories to talk to people about with growing pains because making, making a big change like that brings up, you know, fear and insecurity. Yeah. So fear and insecurity showed up and we hung out for a couple of days and then I you know, let the, let them go. Uh, and I just jumped in and I burned the boats, yeah. right? So when you make a decision, the Latin derivative of decision is to cut off from everything else. And I really believe that, that when you decide you need to burn the boats yeah. and you just need to be all in. And that's what I did. So how long from like you made the decision to you're like in the office working with us? Um, two months, less than two months. Yeah, because I'm trying to, like, were you there from day one when they bought? Yes. You were there day one, yeah. Because I couldn't remember now if it was, like, you came in, like, a week later or something, or if it was right from the beginning you were with It was us. right from the beginning, right yeah. from the announcement. Yeah. So I met with Ken and Deborah, I believe it was the end of July, and I started in September. Mm -hmm. So I had to wind up my business and find okay. somebody to take care of my business in that period of time, uh, which I did, and I had some crossover where I was doing both for a, a short period of time because it, you can't wind up a 20-year yeah. career that quickly. <laughs> um, so I had some carryover, but I needed to get to see all the Hallmark offices and get familiar with their structure and get familiar with the company a little bit before here. So from September, middle of September until October 7th, yeah. uh, I did that and we took over here October 7th. So when you come in like to a new brokerage, especially now because like Hallmark now is, like has bought a few more brokerages since right? then you kind of bring in a new brokerage. What does that process look like in terms of like evaluating what you guys have, who the agents are, what you can do to help? Like for you coming in here, being an agent with no management experience, yeah, a new zero. brokerage, how did that look like? So I was petrified. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I remember when we made the announcement and, and we were at the Golf and Country Club and um, I do what a lot of people do is I go buy a new outfit because you know that's gonna make me feel better <laughs> and I'm standing up there in front of and I luckily I knew a couple of people in the company at uh, York Group so you know I immediately went to their eyeballs to yeah. familiarity um, but I was petrified yeah. and I had no management experience and um, Originally, I thought I was just going to be manager, but I, I found out shortly before I started, I think I found out the Friday from the Monday yeah. that I was going to be the broker of record as well. And I remember saying to Ken, I remember saying, Ken, you don't understand. I got my broker's license in my 20s. I remember nothing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, I have no idea. And I was really scared. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> Ken was really amazing with me. He mentored me all through and he spent Every week we had a mentorship session where he would show me what I needed to look for and what I needed to do and really help me through that first year. But the first year was really challenging because for anyone that's got their broker's license, they scare us to death by telling us that basically you're responsible for everything. So if anybody messes up, it's you on the line as well, right? So uh, that scared me quite a bit. Um, so I looked at, I, I, I was here probably, I would do... 15 18 hour days because I remember, I, remember? <laughs> yeah, I was right here I, like, right there. <laughs> I needed to look at every single document because if I was gonna sign it man I wanted to make sure I knew exactly what everything was and I was signing payroll and it, you know it just it was overwhelming the first yeah. year and uh, it gets easier um, I think I, I came into feeling very comfortable in the second year yeah yeah I was gone by then <laughs> yeah I came into feeling pretty comfortable the second yeah. year and uh, yeah, it's been it's been really interesting. I've I've learned so much, and I've honed my skills, and I've identified things that I'm just not good at. Yeah, I'm just not good at it. And uh, um, Hallmark's really great with their leadership team. They send us to coaching and training, and um, I had the privilege of attending Strategic Coach for a couple of years. And I love what Dan Sullivan says. He says, you know. 
in school system, we, we try to teach people how to be better at things they suck at. Yeah. And their philosophy is very different, and I share their philosophy, is delegate your weaknesses and build your strengths. Yeah. And I, I really feel that way today, is that I've identified what I'm not good at, and I do my darndest to try to delegate those things, um, because everyone in the office is better off for it. Yeah. Right. So how much of your time is done on like administration versus recruiting? Um, so talent attraction, mm -hmm. which I, I like to refer to it, it, it really depends on the week because yeah. I, I do a lot of training, developing and coaching. Like I, I spend a lot of my time on retention activities. Yeah. So retention activities, the byproduct of having a great retention plan is people become attracted to you by by attraction rather than promotion. Um, so a lot of people that call us to inquire about what we have is because they heard about us from somebody else or they did a deal with one of our agents. Mm -hmm. So not to put the cat out of the bag, but I don't spend, you know, grueling hours, you know, doing that. Um, I, I do the same thing in, in my role now as I did when I sold real estate, as I try and do the things I enjoy doing. Yeah. And if I do the things I enjoy doing, then it's not work. And so I go out to agent open houses. I go out to public open house. I just like to meet people. Yeah. I like to talk to people. I like to get to know agents. I like to get to know what keeps them up at night. What do they love about real estate? What are, what's bothering them about real estate? Um, what could brokers do better? Yeah. <clears throat> so I love. I like asking questions, and and I like surveying people and and I like to take a mouse trap and build a better mouse trap. So so I typically do that through retention activities and through just meeting new people. Yeah. Um, do I make phone calls to realtors? Not as many as I should. <laughs> 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 Shh, <sorry>. <laughs> <laughs> Not as many as I should because and, and everyone on the leadership team will know this is because I, I focus on doing the things that I'm really good at and that I enjoy. And am I good about, I'm very good at selling the benefits of the company yeah. for sure, because I believe in everything that I do and I believe in the people I work with. And I, I feel like I work for the best place ever. If yeah. I remember Peggy Hill asked me that, uh, Peggy and I met last fall when she was thinking about making a change. And, uh, she said, would you ever work anywhere else? And I thought that was a really good question. And I said, actually, that's a really good question, Peggy. I said, the answer is, if I was staying in real estate, I wouldn't work for another company. Yeah. I might go teach yoga one day. <laughs> <laughs> I might, you know, yeah. be a beach bum one day and do tours on an RV, like RV tours or something. But if, as long as I'm in real estate, I'm, I'm so really happy. Like Barb Brindle Realty in the future. No, <laughs> no, because... Um, when you're a part of something that has synergy and it's ah it's it's difficult to describe but but the team that we have uh, being able to tap in because no one person has everything they need to do well in any business we all need mentors we all need people that can help us when we're struggling people we can look up to um, I think that makes my job recruiting position actually easier uh, because we have that culture and it's missing in a lot of companies and that was one of the reasons I even entertained the idea of getting into leadership rather than practicing real estate was to become some part of something bigger and something I believed in. So I know like when when I was here, you did a lot of like training seminars and like I remember the one specific was like the buyer representation one. Yes, which the actually, ABR course. The ABR, which remains actually the best two days in a class I've ever taken. So if you haven't <laughs> taken it yet, you should. Do you still do that for people? Yes. And is it, because I remember then it was exclusive to Hallmark or is it still like it's exclusive? Still, uh, I still only teach it at our new Hallmark training center, which yep. you haven't seen and you I've should see. There. Oh, you've been? Yeah. It's fabulous. I've done right? a session there. It's amazing. Yeah. So, so we have a bigger training facility now, which is great yeah. because now what we do when we're running an ABR or a seniors course, because I teach the seniors yeah. course and um, also the sellers representative course, is we'll open it up to Hallmark agents for a period of time. Yeah. 
and then we'll open it up to whoever wants to attend. So we generally have 10 seats minimum, like 10 to 20, sometimes 20, mm -hmm. uh, that we can invite people from other companies. So it's not our mandate to recruit with inviting people to events because we're not that company. Yeah. <laughs> um, but we do know that we have some phenomenal training. So um, if anyone is interested in attending a particular class, then we certainly can make room. Um, because we want we want the industry to be better yeah. and the ABR course I've been teaching that for 18 years yeah. OMG so for it's 18 <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's one of my favorite courses I love teaching it yeah. and uh, every class is a little bit different so I've had people come and take it yeah. again um, and we offer it twice a year minimum uh, now that we have Barry I'll probably be offering it up in Barry as well so so yeah, I still I'm I'm, do, I'm in the middle of doing a ten week coaching program here in, in the Aurora office. So yeah. I'm I do things in the branch, and then I do things in Toronto and in Barrie, and then I build the calendar with lots of great people. I'm not the only person. There's yeah. we have lots of great instruction, different topics. Um, so I noticed like because now in commerce, but it's Ottawa, Toronto, Barrie, and Durham. And Durham. So because like I know when even when it, you guys bought Aurora. Agents here would complain that most of the training they had to drive down to Toronto for, which is now only more when you add in Durham, Ottawa. And so, like, how do you guys go about solving that? Where, like, you've got this huge training center in Toronto, but like, Ottawa, for example, is five hours away. <laughs> so, Ottawa has their own training. Yeah. So, um, we have a new online system for our agents now called the Hallmark Hub. And when they like sign into the Hallmark mm -hmm. Hub, the training calendar that comes up is based on what region they're in. Yeah. So if you log into Barry, the training calendar for Barry will come up and all of that training happens in Barry. Yeah. If you log into Toronto, all of the Toronto classes will come up. So we do tr separate training in every region. Yeah. Um, I've been to Ottawa. I'm mm -hmm. teaching a class in Barry next week. Yeah. Um, all of our managers go around and do training at all of our different locations. Yeah. So so I think that's I think that's unique yeah. actually. I don't know very many companies that that do that but well, I don't think there's that many that are that spread out from like a single broker standpoint either right I know there's brands that obviously are right way more spread out but yeah it, single it works brokers level, yeah. it works and not only that but we have um well, as you know we're a very collaborative company mm -hmm. so Mary Roy for example hi Mary <laughs> is um she's from Durham yep. and and she does a listing clinic like phenomenal listing clinic so she's going to Barry in two weeks mm -hmm. to teach a listing clinic in Barry yep. for us uh, and she'll use that opportunity to network with the Barry people for referrals yep. of course I think that's kind of a neat thing too that we have going for us is mm -hmm. that we have these various regions so a lot of our agents that are comfortable teaching and they have something valuable mm -hmm. to say put their hand up and say, hey, I'd like to go to Ottawa and do a course on multiple offers. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to go here and Jamie Dempster's trap. We've had a lot of our, a lot of our agents will go to different yeah. regions and share their knowledge and, or they'll come on a panel. I'll run yeah. a panel. I'm curious, just back on the recruiting thing, because I just thought of it is when people are like, you get the calls of, I'm thinking of coming, like what's causing them to be like, I want this change now, the new brokerage usually, like what's kind of that? Mm, what's tipped in question. their life or their business that they're like, I need to change? Ah, that's a good question. So brand new people, they just shop around everywhere. Yeah. Um, that's what I did. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that's a different yeah. scenario. But people that are calling, they're usually not happy mm -hmm. with something that's happened in their brokerage or something that's going to happen in their brokerage that they've heard about. But oftentimes it's a management issue. It's a management issue. Um, typically, they're not happy with uh, because your office manager, the person that you connect with on a regular basis, there needs to be um, at, at least respect. <laughs> <laughs> it helps. Ideally, a relationship yeah. of trust and um, and respect. Uh, and it's you know management issues can be can be big, um, and sometimes it's monetary. You know, I, I have to think about, you know, people that have left here. Why have they left? Yeah. Sometimes it's monetary. Um, sometimes it's ego. 
So, uh, you know, there is no shortage of ego in this business. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> We've all seen those. <laughs> yes. Uh, which is why I enjoy yeah. going to yoga every night yeah. after work. <laughs> so I can, because yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm in competition, just like a listing agent is in competition. If I have a top producing agent that I've connected with who wants to know about our company and they're interviewing with our company, I'm not the only person they're interviewing with. Yeah. Right? They're interviewing with other people, so it's not unlike being a good listing agent. I was always in competition as a listing agent, heavy competition, and you have to just understand what your value proposition is. Yeah. And you have to appreciate that everyone has a unique value proposition. Every company has a unique value proposition. And I compete with brokerages in this market, in York Region, that um, hmm. <laughs> Think of the right way to word it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, sometimes they o they over promise and under deliver and, yeah. and consistently. So I'm very careful about how I talk about that when I'm meeting with a potential yeah. recruit because I don't believe in throwing mud at competition. I never have. I believe that the more mud you throw, the more ground you lose. Mm -hmm. I never want to compete with anyone at that level yeah. I want to compete on my level and and it's it's very competitive um, it's it's a very competitive landscape out there but I generally will say to a realtor that you know maybe is stuck on price sellers get stuck on price realtors get stuck on price and quite often a realtor can get a higher price for doing a job because of their own merit because they're unique there's no one like them yeah. And there's a connection they've made with their client. And I think the same thing holds true as a broker. I think when when I'm interviewing somebody and they're interviewing lots of other companies or even one other great company. And, you know, normally I compete with great companies. Like there's a lot of great companies out there. I think ultimately, if I survey the last five hires that I've made, uh, they've all come here because they like the management style. They like the training that we have that we have available, and and primarily though, it's it's the immediate environment that they're yeah. very very comfortable in, and yeah. and I usually will say to people, look, and I learned this from Ken. This is one of Ken. I love you for this. One of the best things Ken ever said to me is, if money was off the table, yeah. what would you do? And I think we owe it to ourselves to take money off the table when we're making an important decision like where to work yeah. and where to build my career. We owe it to ourselves to take money off the table and not make it about money. Make it about what feels right because what feels right is where you will do well and maybe yeah. it's here and maybe it's somewhere else and I, it, you know, I'm good with that. Yeah. I don't want people here that aren't committed. I want people here because they want to be here because they're all in because that's how I work. I don't want somebody that came here because I'm the cheapest game in town. No. Thank you, no. <laughs> That's I want people that choose to be here because this is the environment that makes them feel good. This is the environment that they feel that they can do a great job. No. So obviously there'd be bias for you for Hallmark. So let's pretend we're outside of anywhere that Hallmark anywhere. has an office. Okay. If someone's okay, looking- Okay, can we be in Montreal? Done, Montreal. <laughs> <laughs> We're in Montreal. We're in Montreal. Kind of Frenchy, sure. Um, if someone's looking to like switch brokerages, brokerages or joining brokerage, what questions should they be asking their potential manager? Um, questions and also experiences. So one of the things I encourage people to do is ask if you can attend an office meeting yeah. as a guest if they have office meetings because then you'll get a really good feeling of the culture and the environment um, that they have and I've done that a number of times um, you know find out if you can if you can have an experience yeah. with them before you commit to them if possible yeah. um, I encourage that um, how many agents do they have what is their um, manager to number of agents ratio. What's a kind of good ratio for there? So, like I know that there's some companies that have like a ridiculous number of agents for one yeah. manager, and all that means is they're not gonna have time to take your call. Yeah. They're not gonna have time to answer your questions. They're sure not gonna have time to train you. So it's really important to know 
how many people is this manager looking after? Because yeah. if, if it's 500, run. <laughs> it's too many. You can't deal with that many people. Yeah. So realistically, how many agents should like one manager be able to handle? I think... Up to. <laughs> I think that... Oh, that's the 10 minute warning. Okay. I think that a, an experienced manager can handle, uh, you know, 200. Yeah. If, you, if they've got a lot of experience and they're really good with managing their time uh, and they're only doing that job and nothing else, yeah. uh, I think 200 is not unreasonable. I think that if it's a newer manager, a younger manager, they haven't been managing for five years yeah. or more, um, I think that that number should be under 100. Yeah. So, so which point in there do you look at like bringing in an assistant manager? So I have an assistant manager and I have nowhere near that number. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Grateful. Yeah. Um, so I have an assistant manager and I have, you know, 60 people yeah. in this office. However, I also have the role of looking after training and developing yeah. uh, for the company, which requires, you know, a good portion of time. And I do training throughout all the regions as well. Um, I mean, I'm not gone tons. Yeah. This is my, my home. Um, but I think like Barry, for example, I'll use Barry as an example, because yeah. they have uh, seven locations when we took mm -hmm. them over, uh, seven locations and 240 agents. Mm -hmm. um, and they're running like a really experience, right? They've got uh, one full-time manager and one broker of record. Yeah. And I think they have some assistance as well, but that's a great ratio. Yeah. Like that's a great ratio. Hmm. So that's a, that's an important question is what's the ratio and um, are you going to be the person that I'm going, who do I call when I have a problem with an offer? Yeah. Who's the person that's going to help me if I have a problem with a deal? Who's the person that's going to help me if I have a problem with Rico? Mm -hmm. Those are important questions because um, you want to know that there's structure in place within the company that provides support for those things yeah. because some companies don't have that. Some important questions, um, like I'm hearing some really great questions from potential agents these mm -hmm. days. Uh, a big one that has started coming up is what's the demographic of your office? And I find mm -hmm. that younger people are asking this question yeah. because there's a lot of aging offices out there where the, you know, the dynamic mm -hmm. and the energy is not what they're looking for. Yeah. So I think, you know, environment's really important. I'm a Tony Robbins fan, as mm -hmm. you know, and one of his things is you are an average of the five people that you hang out with the most. Yeah. So the office environment that you work in is is really key so i think maybe asking you know the demographic of the office mm -hmm. what's the turnover rate uh how many agents do you have here what's the longest tenure that you have in the office mm -hmm. so in other words i've got agents here that have been here for 30 years yeah. right um and what's the average in terms of you know zero to five years five to ten years because that will give you an idea on the knowledge and the, the collective knowledge and wisdom in the office that you're going to be joining. I think that that's a nice thing to know. Um, how long has that person been managing? Yeah. And in terms of the leadership structure of the company, like what, what does that hierarchy look like yeah. and how long have they been in the business? Because I really think that tenure in the business is, mm -hmm. is super important. Um, particularly when there's market shifts. Yeah. So, you know, if there was a market shift in Montreal, <laughs> uh, I personally, as a real estate agent, would gravitate to somebody with roots that have yeah. been in business for a long time. They can weather a storm, right? Yeah. They know they've been through a market shift before, so they know what to do. I want to be on that boat. Yeah. So outside of price do you find that there's things that people focus on too much that maybe they shouldn't because it's not as big of a deal i think realtors i think and i and i did it too right i look at i look at you know what my bill is as an expense mm -hmm. and that's not the right way to look at it if you're with a company that's helping you grow if you're with a company that's helping you grow that's giving you what you need to develop in your career it's not an expense it's an investment yeah right um, and I think that 
that when, if, if you're looking at it that way, <clears throat> I think that if you're really looking at it that way and not being able to see anything else, I think that that also will set you up for having difficulty with the compensation conversation mm -hmm. as an agent. Yeah. You know, you're probably making cuts here and there that you don't need to make. Yeah. You just need more skill, <laughs> more skill. You don't need to make those, those nips and tucks and cuts. A lot of times that just comes from fear and it comes from lack. Uh, when you come from abundance, those conversations yeah. are few and far between. Good. Mm -hmm. So I know you have a recruiting meeting in a couple I of do. minutes. So we gotta <laughs> wrap this up. So if people wanna <clears throat> learn more about you, get a hold of you, have a chat, what's the best way to reach out? Um, you can email me at Barbara, and I'm gonna spell Barbara because <laughs> Apparently, it's not a common name anymore, and the younger generation has difficulty with it. <laughs> this just happened to me yesterday. B-A-R-B-A-R-A, uh, -A -A, Barbara at RemaxHallmark.com, uh, or you can call me on my cell, 905-424-5035, and I'm happy to hear from anyone, you know, managers, owners, realtors, affiliates, you know. If I can contribute to you in any way, then uh, that would be a privilege. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks for coming on. Thank Cheers. you. That was fun. That was fun. Yeah. <laughs>